Okay guys, just so no one misses this, I'm going to put this in the beginning of the video and then get you guys started. So when you're replacing this SECM module, the whole entire thing, it needs to be programmed. I just put the new one in and every button was doing something it shouldn't have done. And I'm like, oh man, here we go. So I was reading online, doing research, and you have to use Forescan, and you can do like a factory setting. I have it in my videos where it'll download a file online, and it'll pull from your VIN, and it'll download the correct IDs. It's pretty simple, but just a heads up, this will need to be programmed. Um, if you want to be better safe than sorry, you can go in the Forescan and get the IDs of this module beforehand just in case by some chance putting your VIN in the system doesn't work or can't pull your original config file from online you want to take a screenshot of all your IDs first and then get started with this so you have them all in case you can't get them for later on just a very important heads up I don't want someone else to be aggravated like me alright guys today we're going to be changing the steering column control module housing on a 2020 Ford F-150 my truck's a King Ranch uh, I could put the part number in the description but this also has the tilt steering wheel with the rain sensing wipers um, the problem that I'm having is if I go to hit the up volume button on the truck on the steering wheel it switches modes which is annoying. It'll send me to my phone and then back to Sirius XM and all the buttons are doing something different. Um, I read online it seems to be a somewhat common problem. Some people say replace the clock springs. Some people say to replace the whole module. I'm just going to do the whole module and then I'm going to get started. I'm going to start off by disconnecting the battery so we can take the airbag off the steering wheel and take the steering wheel off. Okay, I'm going to disconnect both terminals, only because I get a little nervous when I'm working with the airbags. I'll probably disconnect both terminals, and I'll let it sit for a couple minutes to make sure all the power is discharged, and then I'll start taking apart that airbag in there. Okay, got both of them terminals off. They're both 10 mils. Pretty simple. Okay, so from what I'm reading and seeing on other videos... You got to put something in that hole to release the springs to get this airbag out, one on each side. Apparently a screwdriver is not going to work, so I'm going to try a few things and see which works best. So someone online said that an antenna from a car would actually work if you don't have the correct tool. And ironically enough, I switched the antenna on this truck to the little stubby one because this one got on my nerves and I saved it just in case so not that a lot of people are going to be able to do this but if you're desperate I just cut each end off with my angle grinder and I made it about this long not too long not too short and it worked on the one side, so now I'm going to put it in the other side and see if I can pop this airbag out. Okay, so the antenna trick actually worked. I was actually able to pop the airbag off. I'm just going to start disconnecting the wires behind there and continue with the job. Okay, guys, just make sure you document exactly where you're taking things off. Uh, it looks like one, two, three. It looks like you can either take it off from this connector here. Or, let's see. Two little ones over here. Oh, I'm going to try to see if I can take it off from that right connector and the two yellow ones. Right, guys, and in order to take these two yellow clips off, you want to get a little straight head and pop these little orange clips all up. See if I can give you an example. Kind of hard to do when I'm holding my phone. Here we go. Pop that up. That's all you gotta do with the screwdriver. And then you just wanna kind of wiggle it up a little bit. 
and then it should come out. This one wants to fight me a little bit. Okay. Just make sure I got that orange clip all the way up. Try it again. Yep, there we go. Okay, for this red clip, let's see, it looks like it's on a little bracket. I'm gonna pull it up off the bracket. Oh, there we go. And it's a lot easier to unplug. Alright, guys. <coughs> Excuse me, and to get this one off, this is how it unplugs. You have to get your screwdriver right in there, kind of lift up a little bit, and then you're able to pull this other end out. Now to take the steering wheel off, it looks like there's only two connectors, one up here and one down there. So you just kind of put your finger on it, push it down and pull it out. That's what it looks like. Let's see if it actually works. Yep. That's one. And get this one. Yep. And that's two. All right, and to remove the steering wheel, you need a 15, 16 socket. Believe it or not, I actually have one that's probably been sitting in my box for God only knows how long, and maybe only ever used once, so it's actually coming in handy. Anyway, I'm not going to be fighting with this guy, so I have my cordless half-inch impact driver here and I guarantee it'll come right off with this bad boy yep, and it came right off if you guys don't have one of these I highly recommend it anyway also before you take the steering wheel off make sure everything is straight your wheels are straight the steering wheel is straight the wheels not turned at all you don't want to get messed up putting this guy back in And believe it or not, I didn't need a steering wheel puller. This is coming right out. Um, when you do take it out, it looks like the, these two wires are ran through this hole at the top right here. So just make note of that. All right, we got the steering wheel off. I'm going to start taking the shroud off. It looks like it's only three 7 millimeter bolts, which are right underneath it. And it should come right off. Okay, I got them three seven millimeters out of the way. And I'm just gonna just stick my stray head in there, pop this out right there, pop it out right there, and it should come off. Okay, so did that. I actually was able to slide this bottom one all the way out. I'm just gonna put that to the side. Uh, top one doesn't look like it wants to slide out easily, so I'm just gonna let that hang there out of my way so it looks like there's only one connector for this up in the front I'm just gonna unplug that oh no nope, I'm mistaken two connectors one right here too okay that's out and let's see it looks like one, two, let's see, I only see two bolts right now, let me look around, I'm sure there's probably another one. Alright, so so far I'm only seeing two bolts, I'm going to take that off and see what happens. Um, there is another connector that I found, I took a look at the new part I'm about to install. And it's kind of hard to see because this, I didn't take the shroud all the way out. But it's right up here, top left in the back. You can get it easily with your hand. It's just kind of hard to see on the phone. Let's see if I can get it back there. Get a better look. Yep. Right there. So I'm going to pop that out take them two bolts and see what happens yeah I definitely didn't think it was just two bolts um, okay the one there 
one there, two at the bottom. That's two seven mils. And then there is one right up here at the top, right there. Another seven mil. So I'm going to take that out, and this should come right out. Okay, guys, and that did the trick. It is out. Now I'm going to install the new one. Of course, this happens to me like four months after the limited warranty's up, but what else is new? I knew what I was getting myself into when I bought a Ford, so what are you going to do? All right, so I'm getting ready to install the new one. The one cool thing that Ford did do is they put this plastic retainer clip in there so the clock spring doesn't turn on you while you're installing this. I would recommend to literally take this out at the last possible time, like right before you're about to plug everything in. This way, you know, it didn't move on you and you don't got to worry. Okay, so I'm in the process of installing the new one. Before you tighten the bolts up, remember, one, two, and there's one right there, three. Make sure you have all three lined up by hand first before you start tightening to make sure you have everything in the correct spot. You don't want to tighten one and then the other bolt doesn't fit because the other one's already fully tightened, so it's just a little trick. Make sure you do that first. So I'm all good. I'm going to tighten mine up, and I'm going to continue the install. And when you're tightening these bolts up, guys, just make sure you don't over tighten them. You don't want to snap them. Now that I got them all tightened up, I'm just going to plug in the three connectors. That's one. That's two. One, two. And then don't forget about the one up in the left hand top corner up here. There's that connector that needs to get plugged in. You'll be able to see it if you peek your head down there. Just kind of hard to see on the phone. Now I got all three of my connectors back in. I'm going to put the shroud back on. Okay, got my shroud popped back on. Um, when you're putting these bolts back in, you probably want to put your head under this shroud just to make sure you get the bolts to line up. You're probably going to have to jiggle it around a little bit to actually find the bolt holes but it's pretty straightforward okay and at this point i'm ready to put my steering wheel back on so i'm going to pull that plastic tab out all right and that's out ready to put the wheel back on all right guys so i got the steering wheel back on just remember to run those two yellow airbag wires at the top through the slot of the steering wheel Make sure the wheel's in the yellow dowel pins. And I'm going to put the bolt back in and start plugging things back in. Alright, so here we go. Got the connectors back in. Top gray one, bottom gray one. Uh, got the two yellow ones for the airbag and the red wire for the airbag. That's last. Um, so I don't have Mitchell or all data anymore, so I kind of had to go off of YouTube, Facebook, Google for the torque spec for this. It looks like I'm getting 41 foot-pounds for this wheel. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I think it's generally somewhere between 35 to 40, but I've seen someone working on a 15 where they run it down to 41, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to over-tighten it, so got my torque wrench set, and I'm going to do that now. Alright, this is actually a pretty easy job, believe it or not. So, uh, these airbag connectors are color-coded, so you don't even got to remember where they go. Plus, you have my video now anyway. But, just got blue to blue, yellow to yellow. Make sure you plug the red connector back in and hook it back onto its bracket. Right there. And all you do is pop the airbag in, and that's it. So, I'm going to do that, and then we're all finished. Got my red connector in first, since that's the longest one. It's the easiest one. All right, I got all the connectors back in. Just remember to hook that little red connector over there back onto its clip. Make sure the wire's out of the way. 
and just push this airbag up. And then that's it. Make sure it's clipped in all the way. Push both sides in. Just got it clipped in. I'll make sure there's no gaps. See what we got. Good there. Good there. All right, cool. Now I'm just going to plug the battery back in, and that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, so I plugged everything back in, started testing things, and none of the buttons do what they're supposed to. They all do something different, and I'm reading online that this actually needs to get programmed, which I wish I would have known that before I installed it, so I would have prepped and got the correct IDs from Forescan. So now I'm going to see if I can do it without putting the old one back in and then putting the new one back in. So, here I go. Alright guys, I got my four scan hooked up. I'm going to run this SCCM module configuration as built format command. And I'm going to see if that does the trick. All right, guys, I'm in the SCCM module configuration as built. I just hit this load factory AB, and it downloaded my module from the internet. Uh, I'm going to hit yes to this and hope that it works. So let's see what happens. I mean, worst thing that can happen is the buttons don't work right, and I got to put the old one back in and get the values and take a screenshot and then... Put the new one back in, which would be a pain in the ass, but let's see what happens here. Alright guys, believe it or not, that actually worked. I'm very grateful for this program. All my stuff's working now. Volume up. Volume down. Next track. Last track. All the correct buttons in here are working. I can scroll down. Before, when I first put it in, it was all messed up. Cruise on and off. Whew, that saved me a lot of work. Well, this will be good for someone else replacing this module. I'll make sure to put this first in the video. So there'll be no surprises for you guys. And this is another reason why I do not work on vehicles full-time anymore. Hope I was able to help you guys.